Six and seven, if I were sitting at the sports book in Las Vegas and somebody gave me six, to, six uh, chances out of seven on a football game, I would almost call that a slam dunk. Are those slam dunk numbers uh, where you guys come from or not quite? Well, what if I told you you have a six and seven chance of surviving your next flight? Um, and there's a one in seven chance the plane will crash. No, I think unless you're talking about numbers um, in the high 90s, that people should treat this as uncertain. Um, and if people have a stake in the outcome, they have an interest in the outcome, the best thing they can do is go and vote or participate in the campaign in some ways. No, I think people are mistaken if they see six and seven, they see 85% and they say, this is a slam dunk. This is a projection based on polls and other data. The projection doesn't work if people say, I don't have to go out and vote. You're, that, that's a good analogy. Your plain analogy changes my mind completely on how, <laughs> how, how I look <laughs> at those numbers. Hey, it's pretty decent odds, but yeah, I'd be, I'd be careful with that. <laughs> at the same time, it seems very risky, exactly. Um, the, the other race we've got here, the congressional race we're going to talk about is David Young, an incumbent uh, Republican, taking on Democrat Cindy Axney. And I think you've got uh, Axney actually as a 61% uh, favorite to win in this race. What, what, uh, what is your information showing on this race? So this race is based on, again, because you don't have a ton of polling in this district, but it's based on where you see the Democratic surge everywhere else. And actually, the place where Democrats are doing the best in the polling is up and down the Midwest. Um, this is a pretty educated district and a pretty educated state. In a lot of other districts like it, you see the Democratic candidate doing really well. Um, so the polls are close in that, in that district, um, but our model says based on factors apart from the polls, meaning national polls, meaning polls in other districts that are a lot like Iowa's third, that's why it tilts it just a slight bit toward, toward Axne. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, and, and it seems like there's a similarity with a lot of the races, and I heard the interview that you did uh, earlier as well, that there is a little bit of a default edge, sort of, for Democratic candidates across the nation in this midterm election. Yeah, and you have to remember, in races for the House, we don't have as many polls as we have in races for the presidency, for example. Um, and so you have to use other techniques to make inferences from where you do have data or from what's happened historically. Um, but historically, when you have elections that are potentially wave elections or change elections, historically, the Midwest is actually at the forefront of that change as it was in 2016. Um, and sometimes when a president gains, like Trump did in the Midwest in 2016, and he's not on the ballot and there's a backlash, the places where you gain the most are where you then retract the most two years later. So it's, it's based on on polls where we have polls, where there aren't a lot of polls, then you're turning toward, toward history, and history says that the Midwest has big swings. 